Welcome back. Well, you won't now. Unbelievably, we have never reviewed a Roger Corman film in my dark corner of this sick world. Well, all that's about to change. And what better place to start than... Now, I know what you're thinking, but with a ropey 50-year-old print hiding the stitches, the guys in leech suits don't look that terrible. And I ain't never seen nothing like it. And Corman is at least upfront about leeches having arms. And regular arms on it, like a man. Like a man? But it was sort of different looking. Yes, I'd say, sort of different looking pretty much covers it. <laughs> So, obviously the leeches are ridiculous looking, and the knee-jerk anti-science explanation for them doesn't help. Maybe the proximity of Cape Canaveral's got something to do with it. Yes, that would certainly explain all the giant astronauts you see around. Do you really believe that? But actually, this isn't the least credible part of the plot. You're my wife? Say what? You're my wife. Okay, giant leeches are one thing, but this I just don't believe. Just that I can't see a... A real woman like you turning with a tub of lard like him. It's not the guys in leech suits that ruin this movie. It's not even the all science is bad plotline. It's the taut domestic dramas in between, played out by characters who aspire to being one dimensional. Oh, I'm dead. That would explain a lot. These people aren't like other folks. But by far the worst thing is our hero Steve. Seen here comforting a woman by shoving a gun in her face. Dave, you put down that gun before I get mad and make you eat it. Steve's scientist father-in-law guesses that the recent disappearances might be caused by a creature of some sort and wants to test this theory. A small charge would stun him, bring him to the surface. As local game warden, Steve disapproves. Wouldn't want to have to arrest you, Doc, but I will if I find you near the preserve with any explosives. And spends the next three days thoroughly searching the swamp. If it's there, I'll find it. You'd think, what with it being your job and all. However... Well, whatever it was, it's not here anymore. Doesn't find a thing. In fact, he doesn't even think there's anything there to find. But you can bet your bottom dollar the other two died from Dave Walker's shotgun. So people keep dying. And yet Steve still won't agree to using explosives. Get it out of your mind, Doc. I'm not using any explosives as long as there's another way. Fair enough, you might think. After all. Number one, there's bound to be some aquarium life in that section, even if the bigger forms have abandoned it. Satisfied? No. Because... There are no alligators in that part of the swamp, right? So? No sign of any fish or snakes? No. So, a game warden who in three days of searching not only fails to find any giant leeches, but also fails to notice the complete absence of all other wildlife. I just can't figure it out. How did he graduate from game wardening school? Doc, it's impossible. Even after this revelation, Steve would still rather arrest his own father-in-law than use explosives. I warned him I'd arrest him if he used dynamite. And yet, when the big final explosion does come, whose hand is on the plunger? And it works. But does Steve apologize to the relatives of those who died while he was dragging his feet? What about human life? Three people have been killed in that game preserve. Does he fuck? You won't get any argument from me. I don't usually like gung-ho monster films that advocate mass obliteration as a solution, but in this case, I found myself yelling at the screen, blow it up! Take him out of here before I lose my temper. Not because I care about what happens to the characters. Eat the lot of them for all I care, but because it would be one in the eye for that willfully obtuse prick. If you've got a film you'd like us to review, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe.